Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy and to Elite Dangerous. Not too long ago I uploaded a video about star classes in Elite and I got a lot of positive feedback so today we're doing another Astronomy in Elite video because I quite enjoy making these videos to be honest. But before we start, if you have any uh, questions or any topics that you want me to try and explain um, within astrophysics or space science Leave them in the comments down below and I will con uh, consider making a video about them. But anyway, today we're talking about uh, exoplanets and how exoplanets are discovered. But before we start, um, let's define what an exoplanet actually is. Now, exo means outside and planet, of course, means well, planet. So it's an outside planet. So a planet outside our solar system. So any planet that does not orbit our sun... Um, is considered an exoplanet. So that's a fairly easy definition. Now there are many ways that you can uh, that you could use to to actually discover um, exoplanets, but one of them is if you have a very large, very heavy planet orbiting very, very close to its parent star. Then of course, just as the the star pulls the planet, the planet will also pull the star, meaning that the star will slightly wobble in or move around in circles, very small circles. And as it does that, when we then look at the star, what we will see, we cannot see the actual movement of the star because it's so far away. But what we can see is, as the star moves away from us, the light coming out from the star will be pulled slightly, giving it slightly longer wavelengths. And when the star moves towards us, it, the, the light will be compressed, um, giving us slightly a shorter wavelength, making the light more blue. And by looking at the amount that it shifts and uh, how frequently it shifts, you can then tell something about the size of the planet and how far away it is. You can tell a lot of uh, interesting things about um, about the orbiting planet. But again, this requires that it is a very, very large planet that's orbiting very, very close to, uh, to the star in order for its effect to be large enough for us to observe. Another method that is commonly used, and I think it's the most used uh, method today, is by starlight blocking. So if you have a system where you where the planet is perfectly aligned um, with Earth such that the planet will occasionally move in front of the star from our, our perspective, then of course the planet will block some of the light from the star because the planet is in the way. Um, and when it does that, the, the light coming from the star will of course dim as the planet is in front of it. And as the planet moves away, the light will again increase. But of course this means that the planet have to be uh, perfectly aligned and I think it's only like half a percent of, uh, of solar systems that are, that are um, or planets that actually orbit in such a way. So again, not the best way to um, to detect planets, but it's the best we got right now. Um, but also, of course, you can tell something about how long it takes for the planet to pass in front of the star, uh, about how fast it actually orbits. And you can also, by the amount that the light is dimmed, you can then tell something about um, uh, the size of the planet, because a larger planet will of course block more of the light from the star, where a smaller planet will of course block less. And furthermore, if the planet has an atmosphere, some of the light from the, um, from the star will pass through the planet's atmosphere, and then we can see, just as a, a fingerprint, we can actually see the effects that the molecules in the atmosphere have on the spectrum of the star, so we can by letting the light from the star pass through this, the planet's atmosphere, actually tell what the atmosphere is made of, which I think is absolutely amazing. And to, to show you this, um, I've actually made a small uh, simulation of this. Um, and I should say that, yes, it is a simulation, so it is, uh, it's as close to real data as I could get. But I have... Um, I have exaggerated the amount that the starlight dims and also exaggerated the lines that we're going to see just to make it clearer for you to see. Okay, so here we have the actual simulation that I did showing in the lower left corner. Now that what we see right now is the spectrum of the star. We can see the star here. Um, and we have a planet that is just about to pass in, uh, in front of the star. Um, 
Notice that we can actually see here in Italy, we can actually see the atmosphere around the planet being lit up by uh, by the star. Um, but again, look at the spectrum here. Now that the, the planet is beginning to move in front of the star, look at the intensity of, uh, of the light coming off the star. It's slowly beginning to decrease as the planet is beginning to block more and more of the light. But what is also important to note, look at the tail, long tail there. Um, we're beginning to see lots of like small absorption lines, um, like it's like there's something missing here. And that's the light. That's how it would look with the light passing through the atmosphere. And some of the mo molecules in the atmosphere would absorb specific wavelengths of light. Um, and that's kind of a, like a barcode or fingerprint that, the, the, that tells us, depending on these lines and how, um, how strong they are, we can then see how much and what materials are actually pre present, uh, present in, the, in the atmosphere of, uh, of the planet. You can see here, as long as the planet is fully inside the disk, the, uh, um, the intensity of the star doesn't change. And now that the planet is slowly beginning to move outside the disk again, um, we can see the intensity of the light from the stars begins to increase. And of course, the slower the planet orbits, um, the longer it will stay in front and the longer there will go between um, the, planet, the, the, the light dims and the light increases again. And that tells us something about how fast the planet is, uh, is actually orbiting. So just by looking at the light from the star, we can actually tell quite a bit about, um, about the planets, their size, um, how heavy we expect them to be, even their atmosphere, if we're lucky. Um, and now again, here we can see the planet is now fully outside and uh, the star is back to its full brightness. So again, this is a very common method that, uh, that we see being used um, very, very often. So this was my quick introduction to how exoplanets are discovered. I really hope you found this video informative and interesting. If you did, give it a like down below and remember to tell me in the comments what you want to know about astrophysics in, uh, in the next video. And then like and subscribe to the channel so, um, so you know when the next video is up. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, I'll see you guys in space. I recently launched a Patreon page. So if you want to help out the channel by donating a small amount, there's a link both above right here, but also um, below in the video description. And I would be eternally grateful if you did.